Hi everyone, I'm Rincy and this is Rincy Reads. Today I'm going to be talking about True Biz by Sarah Novick. This is one of my most anticipated books of the year or at least the first half of the year. I'm going to be completely honest and say I don't really know what's coming out later <laughs> this year but I saw that this was coming out this year and I was really excited because I read Sarah Novick's previous book A Girl at War and I really really enjoyed it. I'll link up in the cards. I think it was like one of my favorite books of the year that I read it so I'll link a video up above if you want to check that one out. But yeah I really enjoyed that book and so when I heard that Sarah Novick was coming out with a new book I was excited and then when I heard what the synopsis was or read what the synopsis was I got even more excited. So this book mainly takes place at River Valley School for the Deaf and so you are mainly following three points of views. There is Charlie who is someone who is deaf and she has spent most of her life going to like standard schools, I suppose, and kind of just like struggling through. Her parents uh, had an implant put in to try to help her with her hearing so that way she could hear as well as speak. But she had a lot of difficulties with it and she has had a lot of trouble in school, like getting into a lot of trouble and things like that. And so her parents have finally decided to have her attend this school for the deaf so that way there's potential there that she could have a better life. It's basically set up like a boarding school where the kids all live in dorms and things like that. Then there is Austin who comes from a deaf family and he's kind of like a popular kid in school and like well known within the deaf community and things like that because his family is primarily deaf. You know they're extremely fluent in ASL and they're really involved in the community and things like that and so they're, Austin is kind of like the opposite of Charlie and Austin is assigned to Charlie to be sort of like her guide as she joins the school and sort of to help her catch up with ASL and things like that. And then the third perspective is a older woman named February who is the daughter of someone who is deaf and she is basically the principal at the school. And so the story begins from February's point of view where she finds out that three kids from the school which include Charlie and Austin um, have now disappeared and she has no idea where they've gone and then you sort of flash back in time and you see Charlie's first day at school and you follow basically like a school year or close to a full school year and you get to see sort of like how Charlie integrates into this new community and how it changes her perspective on being deaf. So I was really excited for this book, like I said, because I've loved Sarah Novick's previous work, but also because like it is following characters who are deaf, which I will admit that I don't think I really have a lot of experience with reading books featuring deaf characters, and especially not with like deafness and the deaf community and ASL being mm. primary parts of this book. This book is written in a really interesting way where there's no quotation marks really used throughout the book. So when they're speaking verbally, it's just written as normal text. But when they are signing to each other, it's like indent indented and I italicized and formatted in a specific way. So you can tell that like two characters are signing to each other. And the fact that like the speaking part isn't given quotations, I thought was a really interesting choice. Part of me was wondering if it's because like if you are deaf or hard of hearing and you can like partially hear or understand what people are saying or you can like partially verbalize things those noises aren't like super clear <laughs> and it's more just like the ASL is given the dominant feature in this book. There's also the fact that like throughout this book there are parts in here that like teach you ASL so I'm going to try to find a page. So it has like pages that have like signing like directions or instructions and it teaches you different things so this one talks about like how nouns verbs and adjectives work in ASL and things like that and it shows like the instructions for if you wanted to sign certain words things like that and so basically like if you were to get a language book that was teaching ASL this is kind of like a page that you would get and that's scattered throughout the book there's also information in here about like deaf history and the evolution of ASL as a language and things like that and so it's really interesting to read this book because you're following this fictional story but there's a lot of like real history woven throughout it to teach you lots of things that are not typically taught or talked about. So I really really enjoyed the book for that. I also thought that using the comparison between like Charlie and Austin as someone who has grown up completely learning ASL from birth compared to someone who is trying to learn ASL later in life as like a really interesting contrast. You know the two families have a really interesting contrast. You learn a lot about their families and their fam home life situations and things like that. And so there's some like really interesting conversations that take place in here about what's best for these kids, the difficult choices 
that parents are presented with and them trying to make what they think is the best choice possible about how it has like ramifications and things along those lines. And so I really, really appreciated this book for all of those aspects. And those like parts of the book were really what I enjoyed about this. This is mainly a young adult novel. So there is a lot of like coming of age stuff going on in here. Charlie is a complicated character. I would say she's basically like the main character in here. She gets the majority of the time in this book. And she's a really complicated character. Like I said before, like she would get into trouble. It briefly talks about what her life was like at her old school and the situations that she got herself into. There is like drinking and drug use and stuff like that that's utilized in here. But I feel like the way that Sarah Novick talks about those things in here, she neither demonizes the characters for using it nor glorifies the experience of it, which I thought was a really interesting balance that most, I think, storytellers in general, whether it's books or TV or movies or anything like that, like rarely achieve. And again, I like appreciated this book for that. The one sort of like downfall for me is I think that Eleanor, the principal, her sort of points of view really detract from the story. Like they add color and they like explain a lot about the school itself and they help provide a point of view that again is very unique as someone who can hear and verbally speak but also is extremely fluent in ASL because her mother was deaf. It's again a very unique perspective that's provided but like in terms of the way her storyline integrates with the rest of the book it was a little bit detached and I do will say that those points of views or those chapters made it feel like this book was moving a lot slower. Again it's young adult so you would think of it as being more plot focused but this was definitely a more character focused young adult book so it moves a little bit slower so just like prepare yourself for that. This is a book that like I was never itching to go back to it necessarily until basically the end of the book where you know events start happening and the action starts wrapping up a little bit and then I was really excited to keep going to see how it was all going to turn out but like the first almost 200 pages I enjoyed my experience while reading this book, but I was never like itching to get back to it, if that makes sense. There are also kind of these one-off chapters from a couple different side characters, and I don't know if I fully love them. Like I, I have mixed feelings about them. Like one of them is from Charlie's roommate's point of view, who is black. And so I will admit there's like an incident that happens in here. And prior to that incident, I had no idea that Kayla, the roommate, was black. Then you get a chapter from Kayla's point of view, which again was interesting because it teaches you about black ASL. But it almost feels a little bit like like tropey in a certain way because you don't really get much else from Kayla. And so it's kind of just like used as a way to have that discussion rather than making Kayla feel like her own person. So yeah, it's just like little things like that where like these characters feel almost like props to discuss a specific part of the deaf community, which I don't know, I, I don't think that's the intention. And I like to give people the benefit of the doubt, but that's the way that specific part that fell to me. It gets to a bit of a slower start and there were like choices and elements in here that like I didn't necessarily love how they were handled, especially some of the events that happen later on in the book, which again, I'm not going to get into too much detail about but if you read the book you know kind of like the way things wrap up feels a little bit unsatisfactory which maybe that was done on purpose and it's like a thing I've been pondering since I finished the book like whether or not Sarah Novick left the ending kind of a little bit ambiguous because that's kind of like how life is but it does feel a little bit unsatisfactory so I don't know mixed feelings on that end but overall I really enjoyed my experience reading this book and I would highly recommend it. I think that if you're someone who enjoys like a good coming of age story if you enjoy more character focused young adult books you would definitely be interested in something like this and also if you are interested in reading about the deaf community or reading books with deaf characters or anything along those lines I feel like this is just a really unique perspective that you don't get a lot in books and I definitely enjoy my time reading this book. So like overall I would rate this like a 3.75. <laughs> I'll probably round it up to four stars on Goodreads but overall this was like a good book but I think I had higher expectations than maybe I should have reading this book because I just really enjoyed Girl at War and I expected this to be a little bit different but I think Sarah Novak was trying to cover a lot of things in this book and provide a lot of different perspectives because again you don't read books featuring deaf characters very often and especially like going really deep, not deep, but like providing a lot of history about ASL and the deaf community and things like that. And so by doing all of that, it's really informational, but I do think that like some of the characters and some of the storylines are not as deep as I typically want it to be, which 
like obviously is a personal preference. So yeah, those are my quick thoughts about True Biz. Let me know down in the comments below if you read this book, what your thoughts were on it. Or if you have any questions about the book, feel free to leave that down in the comments section as well. So yeah, that's all I have for now. Thanks for watching.